What is up guys, it's officially Monday and it's time to bring the 240 back down to the shop. Now we had the drift event Friday, if you guys saw that, awesome. If not, go check it out. I know I haven't posted in a few days and I apologize. I tried vlogging this weekend and I know you guys hate to hear but I felt absolutely awful and I really couldn't get anything done so I apologize but it's Monday, fresh start. We're gonna try and be productive today. So, if you guys watched the drift video, you would've saw I had a little oil issue. Now, my car survived the event, it was awesome, it did great, but towards the end of the day, my oil cap actually went flying off. I didn't notice early enough and oil got on literally everything. Today I'm gonna, before I take off the trailer, I'm gonna try and spray the engine bay down as best as I can at a car wash and uh, get as much oil off as possible. I mean, it's everywhere. Now let's hook this thing up and get to the shop. Hopefully that does it. Now I gotta find another oil cap and let this thing dry off and whatever. So besides the oil cap fiasco, she did great. Now let's get to the shop. So before I pull the car off the trailer, I need oil cap for it. And uh, since none of my friends are in the cars anymore, <laughs> I'm just gonna steal Don's. This thing ain't, it is not going anywhere anytime soon. Thank you. Perfect. Guys, I'm gonna show you how not to unload a car off a trailer. That's how we unload cars out here. Yes, sir. You did good. You did good. All right, guys, as you can tell, it's decently late now. Um, Got the 240 unloaded, it got unloaded the truck from the drift event and got all that stuff out of there. Such a mess, but we're all cleaned up. I had like a really cool video idea planned for today and I waited all day for it and it didn't go through. Unfortunately, that's just, you know, part of the daily vlog struggle, but it's okay. Um, I do have some parts for the BMW. I don't have enough to finish it yet. Um, have been slacking on that too. I'm usually pretty good about getting my bills together pretty quick, but BMW, I pulled back from and I didn't give it my all and that's what happens. When you don't give it your all on builds, they linger, and all of a sudden it's been weeks and nothing's done. And I know a lot of you guys know that, so you got to stay motivated. But I have enough to get a few things done, and I also got some new parts for it over the weekend. Nothing too crazy, but I'm gonna show you guys now. So if you guys know, I did refresh the interior uh, not long after I got the car because the interior was basically falling apart. Rewrapped the door cards and everything, did the headliner and whatnot. But the back seats, though they are cloth, and I do love that cloth, they're ripped. They're faded and they look like crap. And so are the rear panels right here because I did not wrap them. I was fortunate to be able to find a set of M3 rear, rear seats from a buddy. So I wanted to find some clean cloths, but they're not that easy to find for some reason. So we got these. Only difference with these is like, I think it just has the M colors and that's it. I don't know how I feel about it, but it's not bad. It's better than ripped cloth. And another cool thing I got from another friend a while ago is black leather door cards. And you E36 guys that know, black leather door cards in good condition are extremely hard to find, so I'm really happy. And on top of that, um, I'm gonna try and put some stuff together for the supercharger kit. Before we do anything else, I wanna take the inlet pipe for the supercharger. This whole con contraption right here, from the supercharger to the intake, take this apart and I wanna wrinkle black this piece and this piece, because of course that's my favorite finish, and we gotta refresh this whole piece right here. So let's take it apart. Awesome, so we have them apart. So now, these do have a nice hammer black finish to begin with, and of course it looks amazing, so we're just gonna scrap these up and spray them, and then while this stuff is drying, we're gonna work on the rest of the stuff on the E36. Spray, spray with the wind. Out here with the speed dry. This stuff, it needs heat, or else you're gonna be waiting days for it to cure. Now it's time for the interior that I got for the rear. Bam, that's what we got. So these are the rear door cards. Uh, as you can see, they're just kind of dirty, but they're actually in pretty good shape. And then the rear seats, also pretty dirty. You can tell they've been sitting for a while. 
The leather got a little chewed right here for some reason. I don't know why, that's pretty unfortunate, but it's whatever. Um, so we're gonna take the time, clean this all up, and make it look like a nice back seat. These actually cleaned up pretty damn well. Now, I have this leather restorer that I got a while ago from Asian Andy. He sent this out. Um, so I'm gonna wipe all of this stuff down and see if it makes it shine a little bit more, but for now, not bad. The door cards though, shined up amazing. So I'm really happy about these. So the stuff works pretty good. I mean, it kind of just makes the leather look shiny. It just kind of, kind of looks a little weird. I don't know, whatever. So it's empty. Well, I gotta rip that out. But could do I mean like I could technically do like a back seat delete. They make really nice panels, but I like interior. I think interior is very nice. So we're gonna take this out. Look how nasty that is. That that's pretty that's pretty shitty. Good thing we got freshies. Alright guys, so the first step of putting the interior back together is these panels. Uh, the little side door card pieces. These actually go in first. And uh a few of you might have caught the error right now. I'm gonna give you guys a few seconds to guess what it is. Kinda sucks. As you can see, my beautiful new rear door card pieces. Really nice, right? They don't fit. These came off of a vert, and I guess the rear vert panels are different, or maybe it was a newer chassis and that's why it's different, but these don't fit. I mean, I just compared them and it's like a, like a whole different shape, unfortunately. I mean, like, look at this. This is not, not happening. That really sucks. So these side things, yeah, like these, these thingies, yeah, those sucked. So, but they're in, we're good. Time for the bottom. Hey, looks pretty good. I mean, just imagine that there. Not bad. The leather looks a little funny because it's so like shiny versus like the dull ass carpet, but she could use some love. Let's do the door cards now because the door cards are getting kind of stank. So as far as I can remember, the door card just kind of... Come on. Nice. Hopefully all the clips oh. aren't broken. And huh, to the door to the doors. This has way more clips. Oh, I gotta transfer you. So it looks like I have to transfer like this whole piece and that. Not stoked. All right, so I didn't film it because I thought I was gonna screw it up. But um, pull them off this door card. Do one the new door card. We have our little buckets for the door card and this top. Still had to put all of them on. It is really late, so I couldn't go out and get any like glue or epoxy, so I kind of scrambled around the garage and tried to find us whatever I could. So there's got a lot of random concoctions holding this on. But I think these these have to be pretty, these have to be on in like the right location. So hopefully I did it right. This looks like I moved it over to the left a little bit too much. We'll find out. So let's go test it. Out. Well, it's a little unfortunate. So, mm, so nothing lines up anymore. Um, I'm not gonna lie to you guys and try and rig it. The door card doesn't line up for crap. The mounting holes don't even seem to be nearly close to what they are. Um, I don't think it's just where I glued the pieces. I think even these side pieces are in different locations. I don't know if it's because they came off a of vert or what, but that's really annoying. And it's too late to try and mess with those right now, so I'm gonna save those. It's unfortunate, because these door cards are really clean. That sucks a lot. Oh, that sucks so much, but it's whatever. <sighs> gonna move on to the intake stuff and trying to get some more things done, because the interior stuff, besides the back seats, is, is a complete fail. All right, guys, so, um, if you saw all the couplers on the intake piece before, before we painted it, you would have saw they were all kind of thrown together. Bunch of random hose clamps, 
a bunch of random couplers. It was just that what I had around the garage to make it work. And um, when Tommy and Justin were going to do the supercharger kit, um, they ordered new Vibrant stuff and I just picked it up from Justin. And I'm trying to make it work. Um, seems like they ordered like, like only like one thing was correct. Everything else is like a size too big. So I'm trying to make something work, make it look nice. But this is a Vibrant piece. I cut off a uh, step down that's gonna work for now. And I have to basically make this go like this. So problem 700 of tonight's fun, fun time is this piece. Now, as you could see, this S isn't quite as large as this gap needs it to be. As you could see, it needs to go over almost a whole inch. If you put this in, it, it lines up right there. All right, so this is what I came up with. So to make this stretch all the way over here, I just kind of loosened all these couplers and just kind of helped split the difference between them. As you can see, they're all kind of put on a little crooked, but they'll seal. In the end of the day, it looks better than before, and on camera, it probably looks pretty decent, but the high pressure side, it's all good to go. Fortunately, at this point, we could throw the radiator back in, which would be nice because it'll, I mean, it's one last thing we have to do, and it'll make the car look a little bit more complete. So we can kind of just like, come on. Easy enough. We're gonna add this to the list of L's for tonight. And that's his upper radiator hose. I completely neglected the fact that I needed a new one. Now with the kit, the hose literally sits on the belt. So you're supposed to get a custom hose that's for this kit. And the dude that sold the kit to Tommy uh, lost it and he can't find it. And I have no idea where to get it. And I completely neglected that whole fact. I've been slacking so hard with the car. It is unreal. I don't understand like what would be custom about it. If it's like just kind of like indented a little bit like right here to clear this or if I'm gonna have to get a aluminum radiator and have a neck welded onto it all right so I did get an electric fan for this which I can sneak in with the shroud on um, but the reason why I threw the factory shroud back on is because the shroud actually holds the cool overflow tank right here and I know aftermarket radiators come with a mount and I know they make other aftermarket coolant reservoirs that you can eliminate the shroud or go with a different shroud but the easiest option the cheapest option it works fine and it, and it looks good is to utilize the factory shroud that holds the coolant reservoir on top of it as you can see this right, that'll do it as you can see it kind of rests in this piece i've lost a little clip right here i guess i'll find it eventually but the hose goes like through the shroud and everything so the shroud is like pretty important so with the supercharger kit i can't run a uh, clutch fan just because the clutch fan spins right here and it'll hit the actual um, belt for the supercharger. So what a lot of guys do anyways, because uh, BMW fan shrouds are known to like literally explode and destroy everything is switch to an electric fan. So I actually, this is, so we actually got a cool sponsorship uh, from Hayden fans. Uh, I'll put the website in the description. Uh, I'll show them again in the next video. They actually reached out to me and, and asked if I wanted if I was looking for some fans, and I said, yeah, looked at their products. They seemed really nice. I'm really impressed with them. So was B Hall, he checked them out earlier. They're balanced and everything. So excited to try it out. The go-to move for these is just throw a 16 inch fan on it, call it a day. Just slip it down. I'm not gonna do it now, but just slip it down and kind of just mount it straight to the radiator. Though it won't be as efficient as running it off its own shroud. 16 inches is plenty of enough surface area on the stock radiator to efficiently cool the engine. It's a very common size. Uh, some of you might disagree um, because it's not utilizing the whole radiator, whatever. It's been done hundreds of times and it's been fine. So there you go. We got the fan. And they also sent me a fan control, which is awesome because I hate electric fans on switches because I think it's half ass. And when you forget to do it, your car overheats and it sucks. So they sent me an electric fan switch, like a really, really nice one. So. We'll wire this up another day and we'll get that all right. But we did get a lot done on the E36 today. I'm pretty excited. So now we gotta throw the little intake tube on, get the fuel set up, pull the tune in, finish up the coolant stuff, get the fan on, and she's ready to run. Not bad, not great, but not bad. At least we got something done today because today has been a day of loss for me. You guys have been hearing me complain forever. Um, Though today didn't end up working out like I hope it would. Uh, we still got a few things done. I hope you guys still enjoy today's video. And hopefully and hopefully tomorrow will be a better day for me because today was just not my day. So you guys know the deal. Like, comment, subscribe. Stay tuned for more content and I'll see you guys tomorrow.